Hi, before I start this video, I would like to ask for your help. If you know how to set up a C922 Logitech webcam, drop down in the comments box because I need the help. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a bonus video, as you guys can see, it's not Sunday. A lot of you have been sending me messages asking me if I'm still in the military and the answer is yes, I still am serving for the greatest air force and i wanted to go ahead and deep dive in the 4no career which is aerospace medical services as well as i want to talk about aeromedical evacuation for the reserves and active duty because it seems like some of you are confused about how that career field works because it does sound like it's one career field or two career fields we don't understand how many are they so I'm going to deep dive on all of it and give you guys all of the information that might be helpful to you guys on that journey if you guys want to go into the health services in the Air Force. I will though first give you guys a little bit of a background on my career. So if you guys want to just go ahead and go to the timestamp on the description box where I start talking about the reserves and active duty side of things, just go ahead, go to the description box and I'll have the timestamp right there. But before that, I want to talk about my journey into aeromedical evacuation. So let's start with a little bit of my story. I signed my contract with the Air Force in 2014. I went to boot camp in November that year and I finished boot camp January of 2015. I didn't join the Air Force as a 4NO. I joined the Air Force as a 2T2, which that career field is called air transportation. If you guys have any questions about that career field, I'm going to post a link down below on the Air Force website where there's some information on it. But if you guys want me to post a full-blown video about my training and what the job entails and things like that, let me know down in the comments and I will make a video about that career field because I will was on that career field for about two years. That makes me a cross trainee because I went from one career field to another career field. And if you also want me to make a video about how I cross trained from that career field to T2 into the 4N career field, drop down in the comments. And if enough people have the interest to know how to do that, I would definitely make a video about it. Now let's deep dive into the 4NO, aeromedical evac, reserves, active duty. What is 4NO? 4NO is a AFSC. Down below in the description, I have the Wikipedia for AFSC. AFSC means Air Force Specialty Code. 4NO is one specialty code, just like 2T2 that I mentioned in the beginning is a specialty code. 4NO is a aerospace medical service. So if you become a 4NO, you will be a medical technician or a med tech. I got a question once in the past asking me if a 4NO is the same as a medevac technician and the answer is no. And later in the video, I'll explain why. Aerospace medical services is not the same thing as aeromedical evacuation. If you are talking to a recruiter, if you signed your contract as a 4NOX1 and you haven't been verbally told that you are going to AE, you're not going to AE. And that will make sense a little later in the video, trust me. And 4N school is divided into two phases. The first phase is the most critical one. You will have smaller little segments. The most important part of the whole training is the EMT portion because you will have six weeks to prepare and pass the EMT National Registry, computer test, and the skills portion. The computer test is a smart test. Uh, every question you answer correctly, it gets a little more difficult. Yeah, it gets harder as you answer correctly, and then it gets easier as you answer wrong or if it changes its subject or something. So you never know, did I answer it wrong? Why it got so easy? You know, it, it gets really confusing and difficult. Then after you do the computer test, if you didn't pass, now you have to pass the skills test. Once you pass the skills test, then you are allowed to take the computer-based test again. For skills test, you are only allowed to do it twice. Don't call me on this. This is what I went through. You will do segments. They have medical trauma, how to handle oxygen, how to board a person on a backboard. From the 10 things that you learn how to do, you will only be tested on seven, but you need to pass all seven. Once you pass that, you can take the computer test again if you failed. If you you didn't and you pass both congratulations you'll be coming an EMT and then you move right along and go to the Air Force specifics the nursing studies if you don't pass the skills test on the second try 
you will lose that career field and you will be retrained into another career field. So that's the paramount, the most important thing you need to focus on when you go to phase one, registry of EMTs. So everybody must pass it. Phase two, you will go to another base and you will have hands-on. You're basically just gonna work at a hospital. You're gonna get to see a lot of cool stuff and then you're gonna finish your training and you're gonna go back to your home station. It was about five months of training for uh, for an OR. Once you finish your schooling and you get your EMT license, you can challenge the LPN LVN board and get a LVN LPN for yourself. And also if you have enough college credits necessary to get a associate's degree from the Community College of the Air Force, you will be awarded a associate's degree with the Air Force in practical nursing technology. For you to be accepted in this career field, you need to make sure that you get at least a 50 on your ASVAB and also be very, very strong on your sciences when you're taking that test. So remember that I said in the beginning that some people are confused about the fact that 4NO is not aeromedical evacuation and they asked me if aerospace medical services was the same thing as aeromedical evacuation and I said no. So here's your explanation. You have some shred outs. These shred outs can be done by both reserves and active duty. I know all these shred outs are available for the active duty, but I don't know how many of these shred outs are available for reservists. You can also shred out to independent duty medical technician, biomedical evacuation technician, to hyperbaric medical technician, allergy and immunization technician, special operations command, medic dialysis medical technician, critical care technician, neurodiagnostic technologist, flight and operation medical technician, so those are shred outs that you can do once you are 4N. Those are things that you can pursue once you get your 4N. Aeromedical evacuation, basically the mission is we are going to set up and move patients in the airplane. And so we just have to go through a little more training to do that. Our patients on the airplane are always going to be stable enough for travel unless told otherwise, but they're always going to be coming from a hospital already like being cleared by a physician saying that they are stable for flight. Obviously, things may change. The nurses will do an assessment to make sure that these patients remain stable for flight because we don't want anything bad to happen while we're flying. The additional training that we need for aeromedical evacuation is SEER, which is Survival Training School, but I'm not going to discuss it on video because I'm not completely sure what I can discuss about the training. After SEER, you will do Flight school is also divided into segments, so it's about two months school, and you also can fail that school. And if you do fail that school, you will just become a pure 4N, but if you fail that school, you will not be a flyer, you're not gonna be on medevac. The first phase of flight school is basically just in class. You get a refresher from your 4N classes, you're gonna get some practice, and then the second phase is just basically you doing mock flights, learning how to set up your oxygen on your aircraft, your electrical, and learning how to work with nurses and things like that. By the end of flight school, you have something called a check ride and you need to pass that. And a check ride will be required every year. So don't think that once you pass your check ride in flight school, it's done. No, 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 no. All right, let's talk about active duty. For active duty AE and all the shred outs that I mentioned before are not available for them in their first couple of years. At least for AE, that's what I am and that's what I kind of know from talking to other active duty members. You need to have at least two years in your hospital of work and training and experience with patient care before you can even be considered to request to have somebody approve for you to go to Sierra and flight school to do AE. And also, you're not allowed to stay AE. You can only do a tour. You will do a tour as AE, I think it's a maximum of four years, and then after that, you cannot do AE anymore. However, there's one cool thing about active duty. If you are active duty and you wanna to go to nursing school, there is a nursing school program available, and once you finish, all you gotta do is timing service on active duty which is about, I think that you need to give them like six years. Some people told me that they prefer doing it that way because once you finish your nursing school, you have four years of experience and then if you wanna you know, separate from the military and whatnot, you already have four years of experience in patient care and you will make good money. That's food for thought if you're active duty. 
I'm done with that too. All right, let's go to reserves. That one I know well, so I'm gonna try to like get everything I can. So you guys, as a reservist, when you sign your contract, you actually will be able to go to AE on your first term. So you will be able to sign a AE contract with your recruiter. You don't have to be a 4N for a certain amount of time. So the only caveats are you need to finish the schooling. You need to pass the 4N school. You need to finish SEER and you need to pass the flight school. And trust me, I've seen people fail. So you need to pass those things. So whenever you're in training, don't fool around. Make sure you pass your training. Make sure you get back to your unit wearing your flight suit or your flight suit OCB whatever is coming once you finish the schooling and let's recap you will do four and school two phases about five months phase one emt license phase two hands-on then you're going to go to seer which is about a month then you are going to go to flight school which is about two months again classroom and refresher from your four and old school and then phase two you are going to be doing your missions mock missions with a check right in the end make sure that you pass that schooling make sure that you do your best make sure that you go back to your unit when you go back to your unit you will be on the job training on the job training can range from one to five months or 140 days it will depend on budget it will depend on your unit if you don't have any breaking training you can expect to be at least a year to a year and a half in training if you do have breaking training, it will be longer. Now, keep in mind that this job is great. You travel a lot. I can tell you that I've been to Belgium, Scotland, Hawaii, Utah, Minnesota, Puerto Rico several times, New Finland. Oh my God, I've been so many places. Florida, at least three times. Anyway, so one huge thing with this career field that you need to keep in mind as a reservist is that you have a whole lot of time-consuming things to do. When you travel with AE, is going to be at least three days. You need to fly at least once a quarter. And as I said, you will have a check ride once a year. And also you will have office work to do besides your flying job. You should think about it before you apply for AE. And by the way, fun fact, for AE, you need to be able to lift at least 70 pounds above your shoulder and also there are height minimums if you have any additional questions just feel free just use the comment section and i will reply as soon as i see those questions if you like this video please thumbs up it will help the channel a lot if you haven't subscribed yet do subscribe i would love to have you here ring that bell button so you can get notified every time i post i post every sunday or Monday. I've been thinking about posting some bonus content every now and then, just like this one video. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much again. I am very appreciative that you guys are sticking around. Thank you so much for watching.